Welcome back to your mat. I have a wonderful little full body power session planned for you. This is taken from one of the longer form classes in the Balance Studio and I've kind of made it a little bit smaller so that you can get a taste of what's going on in the studio and get a really nice uh, 30 minute session in there. So I'm gonna stop blabbing and we're gonna start working. Come to the back of your mat, feet hips width distance apart, arms by your side, close your eyes. And I want you to start with just five deep breaths, in by your nose and out by your mouth. And each time you take a breath, I want you to let your spine get just a little bit taller. And when you exhale, you're gonna maintain that height, but you're gonna drop the shoulders, you're gonna relax the face, and you're just gonna drop some of the outside world, if you will. Think about the inhale, filling yourself all the way up with everything you want for this practice. And the exhale being a space for you to let go of the unnecessary and of the unneeded. It will be there when you're done. So you'll pick it back up, but for now, just let it go. Give me one more beautiful big deep breath. Let it out by the mouth. And the next breath will be easy. And it'll be in and out by the nose only. I don't want you to feel like you're forcing or trying to do anything special. I just want you to breathe naturally. And once you've made a connection to that breath, you're gonna inhale, bring the arms over the head. Take the right hand to the left wrist and take a little dip over towards the right as you sway the hips to the left. Come right back up through the center, flip the grip on the hands and then take it to the other side, upper body to the left, hips to the right. Bring it right back up through the center. Take a big inhale and as you exhale, forward fold down over those legs. Bend your knees generously. Maybe even open the feet a little bit wider. And then grab your opposite elbows and just hang loose here with me for a sec. I like to sway side to side. And that tiny bit of movement invites in such a big amount of space. So anytime you get into a posture, Sometimes just a little bit of movement in the beginning before you hold is a great way to invite in some more space and move through some of that tension. Good. Release your hands down to the mat and then wrap the arms behind the legs and give yourself a little hug. Now, if your legs are really wide, you know, if you can grab your elbows, great. You might be at your forearms. You might even be at your wrists. Whatever it is, it is. You don't have to straighten the legs if you can do it. But I do want you to relax your neck and let your head hang heavy. Maybe give it a little shake, a little side to side. Let everything just drop right out of the crown of that head. Let it go. And then release the hands back down to the mat. And walk it out to plank pose. Just take a long walk on the hands out to plank. When you get to plank, hold it for five. Lengthen through the crown of the head into the heels of your feet. Tuck in the tummy a little bit more for two, and now lower all the way down to your belly on one, nice and slow. Untuck the toes and come into a little baby cobra where I also want you to hold it for this first one. Draw the elbows towards the hips, drop the shoulders, tilt the chin up, and then push it back into child's pose. And we're just gonna do that one time today, just setting the hips back onto the heels. Forehead comes down to the ground, arms reach forward. Excellent. Now come forward onto all fours, tuck the toes, and head to down dog. And I want you to move and groove a little bit in this first one. We're going to run through a couple, I call them inchworm vinyasa. So we're going to be working from the back of the mat, walking out to plank, taking chaturanga and working into down dog, and then back through again. So this first down dog, I want you to pedal out your feet. We're taking the first round just nice and slow. And then we're going to move with a little bit more fluidity. Yeah, good, stop pedaling the feet, settle the heels down as close to the ground as you can, spread the fingers wide, actively push the mat away, find a little bit more length through the torso, and then walk your hands back towards your feet. Good, bend your knees and come up nice and slow, one notch at a time, let your shoulders hang heavy so you open between the shoulder blades, and when you get to the top, you're gonna inhale, sweep the arms out and up, and you're gonna exhale forward fold back down over those legs. Inhale to plank pose, walk it right out. Exhale either to chaturanga or to your belly, that's your choice. Inhale to up dog cobra. 
and then exhale to down dog, where right away you're gonna walk your hands back towards your feet. Last time we come up slow, bend the knees, roll up one notch at a time, super slow. When you get to the top, inhale, sweep those arms out and up. Exhale, belly in, forward, fold down over the legs. Inhale, walk it right out to plank pose. Exhale, chaturanga or to your belly. Inhale, up dog cobra. And exhale, down dog. Walk your hands all the way back towards your feet, but this time I want you to bring your feet all the way together, toes and heels touch. Inhale, lengthen the spine. And exhale, take a nice deep forward fold over the legs. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Come all the way up to the top where I want you to grab onto a pistol grip with the hands. Lengthen right out of the crown of the head, arms back by your ears. And now bring your upper body to the right as you push your hips out towards the left. I want you to squeeze your two legs together. Your two legs have become one strong unit. And I want you to keep your shoulders and hips in alignment. So think about yourself smushed between two panes of glass, right? Your bottom shoulder's not moving forward or back. Same thing with the right hip or the left hip. Everything is in alignment. Now inhale back through the center, lengthen through the crown of the head, and then upper body to the left, hips over towards the right, and work those same adjustments. The weight is always in the heels of your feet. Your two legs are one strong unit. Your hips and shoulders are in alignment. Chin up, chest up. Yeah, reach a little bit more through the crown of the head. For three, two, and one, you're back to the top. Beautiful, take the hands behind your back. Interlace all 10 of your fingers. Take a nice big inhale, open up the chest. And then forward fold, bend your knees. Bend your knees a lot. Forward fold, put your belly right on your thighs, your chest towards your knees. And then open the palms of the hands. Keep the bind, but open the palms of the hands and just let the shoulders relax open a little bit. Don't worry if your knees are really, really bent. Now, if you can straighten the legs a little bit, do it. Keep the weight towards the front of your feet. Excellent. And then slowly release the hands down to the mat. Open the feet back up, hips with distance. Walk your fingers forward. Think about a mini down dog, but on the tips of your fingertips. And then lean back into the heels of your feet as if you wanted to pull the balls of the feet off the floor. Relax your neck. You should be looking like right between your calf muscles, right, right through the legs. Three, two, and one. Slowly start to move everything forward. Take an inhale, walk it right out to plank pose. You know exactly where we're going. Exhale, chaturanga or to the belly. Inhale, up dog cobra. And exhale, down dog. Right away, walk your hands back towards your feet. This time, inhale all the way up to the top, nice and tall, nice and long. Exhale, forward fold back down over those legs. Inhaling out to your plank position. Exhaling, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog cobra. Exhale, down dog. Right away, walk your hands back towards your feet. Inhale all the way up to the top, nice and tall, nice and long. Big exhale brings you back down, fold over the legs. Inhale out to that plank position. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog cobra. Exhale, down dog. And the last time for this round, walk your hands back towards your feet. Inhale, bring it all the way up to the top. Really get tall. Exhale, belly in, forward fold down over the legs. Inhale, walk it out to plank pose. Long inhale to plank. Long exhale to chaturanga. Inhale, up dog cobra. Exhale, down dog. And then right away, walk your hands back to your feet, but don't come up to the top, stay here. Check that your feet are about two fists with distance, hips with distance. Take an inhale, lengthen the spine, and as you exhale, sit your butt into a tiny chair. Bring your arms up parallel to the floor. Sharpen your fingertips. I want you to look down. Make sure that your feet, your, your, your heels are not in or out. Your feet, your knees, and your hands, everything's about hips width distance apart. Reach forward a little bit more, show off your triceps. And now pop onto the very tippy, tippy, tippy tops of your toes and try to sit a little bit lower in the chair as you bring your upper body back. Hold for three. Hold for two. Fold over the legs on one. Woo! Inhale, plank pose. Exhale, chaturanga. Let's roll through it three times. 
Exhale, down dog. Walk your hands back towards your feet. You've totally got this. Inhale your way to the top. Exhale your way to the bottom. Inhale out to plank. Long inhale, strong plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, through up dog cobra. Exhale, lift the hips, down dog. And the last round, walk your hands back towards your feet. Inhale, bring it all the way up to the top. Exhale, take it back down to the bottom. Inhale to that plank pose. Exhale, chaturanga, baby. Inhale, up dog cobra. Exhale, down dog and hold. Yes. Okay, spread those fingers wide. Actively push that yoga mat away for me. Activate the quads. Press down gently through the heels. Double check that you're breathing by your nose. And then keep this strong form. As you inhale, lift your right leg nice and high. I want you to bend your knee and open up the right hip. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna work the abs a little bit here. So I want you to take a big inhale. And as you exhale, draw your right knee towards your right tricep. Really use the core. Shift the shoulders over the wrists. Now inhale, send it back out and open the hip. Exhale, pull it in. Inhale, send it out. And exhale, pull it in. You got one more. Inhale, send it out. Exhale, pull it in, hold it in. Step the right foot outside the right hand and raise the right arm all the way to the ceiling and take a nice simple twist. Lengthen through the back leg and lengthen out the crown of the head. Excellent. Bring your right hand down to the mat. Step your left foot forward to Malasana. Sit down low into a yogi squat. Move side to side a couple times. You can keep your hands on the mat. You can float the hands towards the heart center and start to kind of push out through the elbows. But I want movement here. We're gonna come back and do this again. So for now, you're just kind of warming up the hips. You're getting things going. Excellent. Hands to the floor, hips to the sky. Step it straight back to plank pose. Take an inhale. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog cobra. And exhale, down dog. Now set up that strong dog. We want a nice strong base so we can work the left side. And again, have control and not move, use momentum. So left leg lifts, bend the knee and open up the hip. Again, no momentum. You're going to take an inhale and as you exhale, use all of your gorgeous strength and bring your left knee to your left elbow or your tricep. Inhale, send it out, open the hip. Exhale, pull it in. Inhale, send it out, open the hip. Excellent, exhale, pull it in. And then your last one, inhale, send it out. Exhale, pull it in, hold it there. Step the left foot outside the left hand. Left arm reaches to the sky, open things up. And again, feel that line from the crown of the head to the heel of the back foot, open up. Good, bring the left hand down, step the right foot forward for Malasana. And this time you'll get a little bit more serious about things. So you'll put the hands, bring them to the heart center. And I want you to put your elbows inside your knees and then push your elbows out as you simultaneously pull in with your knees. And what that's gonna do is give you height, right? You're gonna find that you can lift up through the chest, that you don't feel like you're hunched over or you're really heavy. And you're kind of just here floating in this beautiful yogi squat. Breathe for three. Breathe for two. Push through your heels and stand all the way up in one beautiful fluid motion, reaching the arms up and over the head, heel toeing your feet until your toes and heels touch, and then eagle pose, bringing your right arm underneath your left arm Pulling the, you want your, your palms as close together as possible, but don't stress out, okay? Pull the elbows down, belly in, sit nice and low in that chair, and bring your right leg up and over your left leg. Now, if you can hook your foot, that's wonderful. And if you can't, again, you didn't come to yoga to get all frustrated and stressed out. So you just do the best you can. Keep pointing the toes in the direction that you hope they go, and one day you'll get there. Pull the elbows down. Make sure your fingertips are right in the center of your face, right? They're not off to the left. 
Good, now with your belly in strong, untwist your legs, send it out to a warrior three. Keep your eagle arms for me. Hold it right here. I want you to release your hands in prayer right at the heart center. And then with control, start to stand back up as you draw your right knee up and in towards your chest. Flex your right foot, cross the foot, and sit into a figure four so that your right ankle is above your left knee. And there's a little nook there. I want you to stick it right in there and then sit down nice and low. Breathe. Sink into the left heel just a little bit more. Think about creating space between your bottom rib and your hip. So a beautiful long spine. Three, two, change on one. Feet together, arms down by your side. Yes, let's do the other side. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Left arm's gonna come underneath that right. Eagle those arms. Pull the elbows down, tummy in strong, sit low. Left leg up and over the right. And if you have a lot of trouble hooking the foot or wrapping the leg, you want to sit down lower. So if you're trying to do this from standing and then sitting down, it's going to be really hard. But if you sit nice and low and you lift the leg really high, you're going to find there's a whole lot more space there. Now look where your hands are. They're headed off to the right. Bring them center. Belly in. Weight in the right heel. Eyes on one spot. That's the, the key to balance is to focus your gaze on one spot. Untwist your legs, warrior three. You can do this. Your whole body is parallel to the floor. You're lengthening from the crown of the head to the back foot. Release the hands, prayer the hands to the heart center. Make sure the left hip is not lifting. The left hip is parallel to the mat. Now start to stand up as you draw your left knee forward and up. We're going for figure four. So cross the left ankle over the right knee. Again, find that little space there and sit down low. Flex your right foot. Sink into the, flex your left foot, I'm sorry. Sink into the right heel a little bit more. Breathe. You know, they say as a student, you only hear about 20% of what the teacher says. And I'm so grateful for that because I mix up my right and lefts all the time. <laughs> Change, slowly release, feet together. Big inhale, sweep those arms out and up. Big exhale, forward fold and let that whole series go. Inhale, long spine, and then take a vinyasa. Plug the hands, hop or step back. And you know you can always skip the vinyasa. This is a short little class, so I figure you wanna get as much in as you can. But if you're not in a vinyasa mood, you know, if chaturanga's got you cursing, then just take it straight to down dog, no big deal. From here, lift that right leg nice and high. Exhale, draw the knee towards the nose this time. Bring it in, but make sure shoulders shift over wrists. Inhale, send it out longer. Exhale, pull it in stronger. Inhale, send it out. Exhale, pull it in, hold it in. Step the right foot forward and rise to high lunge, bringing it all the way up to the top. And I want you, we're gonna run through this one time, so I want you to hold and get them all right. Head is over your tail. Feel a sense of lifting, okay? You're not crunching into the lower back. There's a sense of lifting through the torso as you root down through these beautiful, strong legs. You're reaching through your fingertips. Your shoulders are relaxed. Take a deep breath and open up to warrior two. So back heel goes down. Open up the arms. Sit down a little deeper into this front leg. Think about the front thigh parallel to the mat. What I want to tell you is this front knee tends to roll in. Don't let that happen. The knee is facing the same direction as the toes. Head is over tail, fingers are sharp. Flip the palms, don't change anything. Just put your right elbow in front of your right knee. Reach for the floor and then reach for the sky. I don't want you to actually touch the floor. So if your elbow's below your knee, bring yourself back up and use a little more core with me here. Breathe, strengthen the back leg. Hold for three. Hold for two. Change on one, come all the way up to the top, straighten the front leg, rotate the toes forward, pigeon toe your feet slightly, and then with your belly in, forward fold, come down. I want you to put your hands flat to the mat. You can bend your knees if you need. Start to walk your hands back through your feet. I would love it if you could keep the palm of the hand on the floor. And then elbows are shoulder width. Please don't let them go out to the side. Now pull the mat towards your head and try to bring your head down to the ground. 
Shoulders are away from the ears. Weight is in the front of your feet. If your legs are totally straight, I want you to activate your quadriceps so you support your hamstrings. Breathe for three. Breathe for two. And then on one, start to walk the hands forward, lengthen the spine. And we're gonna pivot forward for pyramid. So just walk the hands forward as you swivel the feet. Shorten your stance. You have about two or three feet between your heels. Inhale, lengthen as you square off your hips. And exhale, forward fold, thinking chin to shin. Your legs act as the base for you to get this beautiful length through your spine. So press down firmly through the four corners of your feet and lift up through the inner thighs, through the muscles in the legs. And you'll find you have a little bit more room and your, your torso moves further down the leg. Now inhale, lengthen the spine, step the back foot forward to meet the front foot, and exhale, forward fold and release. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up, come all the way up to the top. Exhale, forward fold, bring it right back down to the bottom. Inhale, lengthen, and then take that vinyasa or not. That's totally up to you. But no matter what you do, you move with intention, you move with control, and you move with the breath. Good. Spread those fingers out wide. Push the floor away. I want you feeling very strong through your arms. And then inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, knee to nose. So again, shifting shoulders over wrist like you're coming into plank. Inhale, send it out taller. Exhale, pull it in stronger. Inhale, send it out. Exhale, pull it in. And then we're going for our last one. Inhale, you send it out. Exhale, pull it in. Hold it there. Step the, right, the left foot forward and rise to that high lunge. I told you I messed up those right and lefts. So we're coming up and you're going through the same checklist. Reaching through the fingertips without shrugging my shoulders. My front leg is strong, my back leg is strong, my head is over my tail. My idea is to get my front thigh parallel to the floor with the knee over the ankle or the midfoot. Take an inhale, exhale, warrior two, open it up. So the only real difference is now we have our hips open, obviously our back heel down. But the rest is the same. We're reaching through the fingertips. We're not shrugging the shoulders. The head is over the tail. The front thigh is parallel to the mat. Watch that front knee. Look at it. Is it rolling in? Push it back. Flip the palms. Put the left elbow in front of the left knee. Reach down and reach up. Now, once you're here, you can actually use the left elbow to help push the left knee back. And then if you simultaneously push the knee back into the elbow, you're gonna find you can twist a little bit more and open through the chest slightly. For three, strengthen the back leg. For two, really good. Change on one, come up to the top, straighten the front leg, rotate left toes forward, and forward fold, come on down. Now hook your big toes, middle and index fingers. Take an inhale, lengthen the spine, rock the weight to the balls of your feet and exhale forward fold. Think about bringing your hairline to touch the floor right between your feet. And just like every forward fold, you guys, you wanna think about the spine. We get so obsessed about our legs being straight, we forget all about how important this is for the spine. So even if you have a slight bend in, in the knee, but it allows you to get the spine longer, do it. Three, two, one, slowly release the toes, lengthen the spine, pivot everything towards the front of the mat for pyramid, shorten the step a little bit, take an inhale, lengthen, and exhale, forward fold. Now, if you can have your two heels in one line, that's great, but if it's really hard for you to balance, think of standing on like a super narrow railroad track, right? So your right heel, your back heel, would be a little bit more to the right. Always try it out. If that, that just might feel better for you, and that's completely fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong. Inhale, lengthen the spine, step the back foot forward to meet the front foot, and exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up, come all the way up to the top. Exhale, prayer the hands to the heart center. Release your arms down by your side and hold perfectly still. We're gonna close the whole standing series with a standing tree. So I want you to shift the weight to the left leg, lift the right foot up, and you either put it on the left inner thigh, 
So it's either above or below the knee. It's never against your kneecap, okay? So you're either up here or you're next to the calf. Hips are in line. I want you to inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Bring your right hand down to rest, palm facing up on your right thigh. And then take a little bend towards the right as you reach the left arm up and over. Now you have to focus your eyes on one spot. Don't even blink. Breathe for three. Keep the standing leg strong. Focus, concentrate, meditate. And then come back through the center. Release the left arm down and release the right foot. Excellent. Let's go to the other side. Shift the weight to the right leg. Use your hand to lift your heel nice and high, your foot nice and high, coming up on the right inner thigh. And already focus your eyes on one spot. You're already in it. Hips are level. Inhale the arms up. Left hand comes down, floats down, palm faces up, resting on the left thigh. Right arm takes a long reach over towards the left. Breathe. Come back through the center, release the right hand down, release the left foot down, stand tall. Take a big inhale, sweep the arms up. And as you exhale, sit all the way down to the ground. Really slowly, 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 slowly sit all the way down. And then I want you to take your feet, hips with distance, reach forward and roll down one notch at a time. Really nice and slow until you come all the way down to the mat and then palms flat to the mat. Move your feet closer to your tush, to your booty, so your middle fingers are touching your heels. Now your feet are hips with distance. That includes your toes and your heels. On your inhale, lift your butt all the way up. Now, taking bridge. If you can, move your shoulder blades closer. Interlace all 10 of your fingers and push down through those pinky fingers as you lift the hips higher. But please, please, please be careful that as you lift the hips, the knees don't roll out or in. Neither do the heels. It's really common for the heels to kind of pop in and the toes to go out. So everything stays in alignment. And it helps if you push down through the four corners of your feet, not just your heels. Lift one more inch for me. Hold three, two, and one. Slowly release. Extend the legs long. Let the blood flow through the spine. And then draw your right knee into your chest, interlace your 10 fingers, hold the leg just above your shin and pull the leg, the knee towards the right shoulder. I want the left shoulder to stay down. Back of the neck is long and it's kind of like you want to make a double chin. Mm -hmm. A little bit more compression in the lower <clears throat> belly and in the hip. And then slowly release it. Yeah, now do the same thing on the left side. Bring the left knee in. Same grip with the fingers. This is great, you guys, for carpal preventing carpal tunnel, tendinitis, arthritis. So getting a good grip with those hands, pulling the knee towards the shoulder. You want to kind of avoid the rib cage if you can. And also, you're not rolling to the left, so your right shoulder is down. Extend long through the right leg. Breathe easy. and release. Good. Bring both knees into your chest and give yourself a very serious hug. So grab opposite elbows or forearms or wrists, but I want you to uncross the feet if they're crossed and just let your feet touch side by side. And give yourself enough of a hug that you're, you know, it's like an awkward hug. Like, you know when somebody hugs you too long, too, too, too tight? I do that sometimes. You're doing that to yourself now, okay? So a little awkward hug, and you're creating some pressure in the lower belly and a little pinching sensation in the hip. Yes. Hips. Good. Slowly release it. Feet touch down. I want you to extend the legs long so that you give yourself a chance to absorb the benefit. You get a nice surge of fresh blood that floods through the hips, through the digestive system, and that's what happens when we release it. Yeah. And now bring those knees back into the chest. Let's take a little spine twist, nice and easy. Now you can either keep knees side by side, or if you'd like to, you can cross your right leg over your left to make it a little bit more intense, and then slowly drop your knees over towards the left. 
Now you can tee your arms out to the side or you can cactus the arms, whatever feels right. Slowly, if you can, let your head roll all the way till you're looking towards the right. But more importantly is learning how to use gravity here and use the weight of the bones to help you. So let your ankles be a little bit more heavy. Let your knees be heavy. Let your big hip bone be heavy. And that will help you to pull that weight towards the left as you reach a little bit more through the shoulder, the right shoulder, and you start to find a bit more of a spine twist. Awesome, come back through the center and then just simply adjust the spine and whatever you did on one side, you'll do on the other. So if you decided to cross the leg, cross it. And if not, don't. Drop both knees down towards the left and then cactus those arms or let them tee out to the side and let the head slowly roll towards the left. You may find that the left shoulder is peeling off the floor. That is super normal. So again, once you start to learn how to move through, to work with what you've got, the weight of the body, how to let go, you'll find that that left shoulder starts to easily come down towards the ground. We always have to find the balance between the strength and flexibility, between the ease and the effort. And it's not just on our mats, it's off our mats that we're looking for that same thing. Slowly come back towards the center and extend your body long into your final savasana. So heels in, toes out, palms up, eyes are closed. All of the lessons that you learn on your mat are meant for you to take off of your mat. So if you tend to fight and muscle and make scrunchy monster faces through your whole practice, I would bet money on that you do that through your whole life. And it's exhausting. And you don't actually get anywhere faster. In fact, you end up slowing yourself down. Now the same thing happens if you're lazy all the time, right? If you never push the edge, if you always give up a couple seconds before you really need to, check yourself and see if you do the same thing throughout your life. And start to find that balance. Start to work more towards that center line of having an equal amount of energy and an equal amount of relaxation an equal amount of ease and an equal amount of effort. Take as much time here in your Savasana as you need. Thank you for showing up on your mat and I will see you in the next class. Namaste.